Hello, people, the web and YouTube TV here. Welcome back to another Hack Time tutorial video. Whoa. So, okay, guys, as you can tell by the name of today's video, today we're going to be taking a look at essentially a DigiSpark. Now, what a DigiSpark is, it's essentially a dev board, very similar to that of the Node MCU, in which we can flash it to do a various amount of different things. But in today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you all how to flash it so that you can use this little device, essentially like a USB rubber ducky. Now, there are some pros and cons to this, and if you want to get really into this, I really recommend you guys to go and check out Satonic's video on how to flash this little device, because I'm not going to get too in-depth on how to do this, and we'll give you guys advice on what to do if this thing happens to go wrong. But yeah, essentially, this is going to be a cheap $1 little USB rubber ducky, and at the end of the video, when I'm done flashing the device, I'm going to be showing you a various amount of, well, converters to, well, convert your ducky payload so that they can go on this little guy. Now, essentially, to get started, you want to, well, order one of these little things, of course, and you want to open it up out of the little electrostatic sheet and just to prove you guys that I haven't flashed this guy yet I didn't even open in the open it from the package yet essentially so yeah now that you got your device out of the bag you have ordered it you first of all want to download some drivers now I will leave a download link below in the description to where you can get these drivers but essentially you want to download the digi stump drivers now there are tons of other drivers for this and i haven't tested them so it's pretty much a trial and error thing one might work better for you one might not i just went with the standard digi stump drivers i just downloaded that unzipped it opened it up and then it launched the dp install 64.exe and essentially when that's all done and ready to go you just download Arduino, open it up and once the software is pretty much up and running which in my case, it might take a minute. I've installed a lot of drivers to this thing, and we're all boards, I should say. But yeah, anyway, essentially what you want to do once Arduino opens up is you want to go under File, Preferences, then you want to add the board manager URL of that DigiSpark. Now, I will leave the link down below for this so that you can copy and paste it into here. Just know you do not want to click on the link, because if you click on it, you'll get a bunch of... um javascript coding i believe anyway yeah once you have that inserted in here it will start downloading the board manager to wherever you have it set to download to and once that's done you just go over to tools board board manager and then you just go under the categories here and hit all to contributed and you basically just want to install the first um one two three four modules here and then you're pretty much good to go and essentially once you have them downloaded you can begin flashing this little guy well yeah guys there's actually one more thing we got to do before we can plug the digi spark into our computer and well that thing is we have to go under arduino and hit tools programmer and you want to select a different well programmer in my case i selected the avr isp mk11 which seemed to work fine just for me but if you have problems i really recommend you all going and checking out um satonic's video like i said he chooses a different programmer and by what he said that was the only one that worked for him so i'm gonna guess that there are different um kind of digi sparked boards out there and some of them may need a different programmer to well flash them so yeah if you have any issues go check out his video and try what he chose and maybe you, you have better luck but in my case that programmer seemed to work just fine and well with that said we're pretty much done we can actually start programming this thing right away plug it into our computer and hit upload and for the most part um Making a script for this guy that actually works is fairly simple. All the scripts include is this basic command here, and then you just start typing what you want it to do. Now, if you don't know how to program it in here, there's actually a very nice example script that we can load up just by hitting File, Examples, DigiSpark, if my mouse would work, Keyboard, and then from here, this will generally tell you what you need to do too well program this thing to act like a keyboard but if you do not want to go through all these steps you can actually use a very simple um ducky payload to well digi sparked digi sparked 
converter and there's actually a ton of choices to use in my case i really liked um ducky spark i believe that's what it called it that's what it's called it's a linux tool that essentially converts ducky payloads the same way that it kind of like converts the text file into an inject bin for your ducky and it's all around a really good tool but since it's a little bit harder to use and of course you got to be on linux i'll show you how to use that one last but for now how about we take a look at some nice old ducky script to well arduino converters that work for windows now in my case I've only ever gotten a few to work, and out of the few that I tried, I really gotta say I like the Automator one, even though it's kind of, um, in Chinese, I think, and at places, but it still works. Like, as long as you can figure out what that key does, you can pretty much get around over the fact that it's, um, in another language. So, yeah, anyway, I'll leave links to this program down below, too, if you wish to use it, but before I actually go and switch over to Linux to show off the converter in that I'm gonna do a nice little quick flash on this guy and for the most part yeah how about we just do that thing first too well flash our device once we actually convert our script from ducky um, code to well digispark code you just input it into the Arduino software or load it in in some cases some of these softwares can actually look save a an Arduino.ino file which you can actually just open up and then just instantly install onto our device. But for the most part, um, since I got a script here, I'm going to show you how to flash this little guy. Um, essentially what you want to do is you want to make sure you have them drivers installed and then you want to, well, plug your device into the computer and if you have a good connection it should light up orange, but just note, in some computers the contacts don't really connect too well so it might light up orange but you might not be able to well flash it so if you have an issue really try to get a USB extender cable then plug the device into it but yeah for the most part this isn't going to pop up the same way that the node MCU does it isn't going to pop up under ports all the time although it should I don't really know why it does that but for the most part, when you're going to go and flash this thing, make sure you don't flash anything that's on any of the, the used ports that you may already have in your computer. And in my case, since um, port 3 and 4 are taken, we're going to be flashing on COM5. So I'm just going to select COM5 and then hit upload. And for the most part, it should upload fine to the well DigiSpark. And... To be honest, you don't even have to have to have this device plugged in first to, well, flash it. Because this will actually tell you to plug in your device the moment you, well, upload. And it should just generally auto-detect it because of the drivers that we installed. And essentially, that's pretty much it. It will install the... It will install whatever script you got in your Arduino sketch up here. And then it will automatically run it. Basically, we're done. This little guy is flashed. I can take it out and just plug it in any computer and the payload will just automatically run. But like I was saying, I'm actually gonna um, open up Linux now and show you how to, well, use a ducky script to Arduino Sketch payload converter. That way you can just already turn your USB rubber ducky scripts into, well... Digispark scripts. So, yeah, I'm gonna go and open up my Linux machine and I'll meet you there. So okay guys, now that my virtual machine has booted up, let's take a look at Ducky Spark. Now this is essentially a Ducky 2 well Arduino payload converter, and I gotta say, it's probably the best converter of, well, Ducky Scripts 2 well DigiSparks code that I've been able to find, and that includes Windows programs. Most of the Windows programs are like generators, you have to type in the code manually and then convert it that way. This one, however, already takes programmed, well, code, or well, original Ducky code, and turns it into DigiSparked code fairly fast and I gotta say this one works really good but before I actually just run the program let's take a look at the readme on how this works now the way this thing works it's kind of like the 
Ducky encoder script that I showed you, the JavaScript file that I showed you before when I made a tutorial on the USB rubber Ducky. Essentially, you put your Ducky code in right after you put the application name in in Python 3, and then you give it an output file, and that output file is what you open up in your Arduino program prior to well uh, flashing your DigiSpark. I keep one of the K. I keep wanting to case, say Ducky Spark, I should say. But yeah, anyway, to use this to use this it's fairly simple, but I just want to say in my case I changed the name of the file to well convert. So when you get this tool, it's gonna be called Ducky Spark. But I really highly recommend you change the name just because it makes it way easier to well put it in and set it all up to convert multiple ducky codes at once. But yeah, let me catch your breath. Anyway, um to actually use this, all you have to do is type in Python, then the name of the, the Python file. In my case, it's called convert, but in your case, it will be called ducky, a spark, or whatever. Anyway, once you have that there, you just want to drag in your ducky um, script file, and then you want to give it a name afterwards. In my case, I'm going to call this tutorial... Uh, I didn't even spell tutorial right, but it don't matter. Anyway, once you do all that, it should just convert the file for you automatically into, well, DigiSparked code. But in my case, I have a uh, bad syntax maybe somewhere along the line. Maybe I have to put Python 3. Let's try this again. Okay, there it worked. Anyway, you want to make sure you have everything named right prior to while well, running the code or else it isn't going to convert of course but yeah essentially we're well done converting our ducky code into well arduino code and if you have ever used arduino before you will know this is just a a file that we can just double click and open on windows to essentially well automatically have that code load in and be ready to well flashed now I'm pretty much done with today's video, but I'm gonna, but I'm gonna like, um, leave this off with a few notes. Now, if you get one of these things, keep in mind that you want to get more than one, because these things come really damaged half the time, and don't expect really fancy packaging or a notebook too well come with them, kind of like with the Node MCU. You won't get any paper at all on how to use this device, and... As well as the board um, list that URL you have to enter into Arduino. In some cases, that link will be down. So if you can't get Arduino set up right away one day or it says that URL is invalid, just try to wait it out till the file goes back online. I can tell you this for a fact that that link goes offline at least once every week. But yeah, with that said, um, is this device worth it, you may ask? Worth it to go through all this pain? Well, it honestly is. For a dollar, you can get like a ton of these little guys, and for the most part, even though it can't really like hold a lot of storage and you can't really expand the memory and add a micro SD card slot to this, I gotta say, the 6,000 kilobytes worth of um, data on this guy will get you pretty damn far. Now, you won't be able to run like hex code um, payloads for the like ducky payloads on this little guy, you'll only be able to, well, have about 6,000 strings of characters before the device says it's full and it won't flash it anymore, so keep that in mind. But for little things such as doing, like, simple routine mundane tasks, it will work great, as well as some pen testing um, things it will also work great at. But yeah, just keep in mind that this does not fit in every kind of computer. I don't know if you can see that. I may zoom in on it. The little USB header... It's not the best damn thing ever, so you really want to invest in getting a USB cable extender or maybe a soldering kit and solder your own kind of um, USB header onto this thing. But yeah, for the most part, I'm pretty much done with today's video, guys, and I hope you all um, enjoyed it. And again, if you don't understand something, I really recommend going and checking out Satonic's video. He did a really excellent job on, well, explaining how to flash this guy and, well, how to get it set up. But... Yeah, like I said, I'm going to leave this video off here. I really hope you all enjoyed it. TTPK signing off. Peace. As you just saw, because if you were to drag the file back into the terminal, it will ask you to then encrypt it again. And, we don't. and you know what? You're done. It should all compile right. It should say pass, pass, pass. And it should erase all...